My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Raiders of the Lost Ark and this review will have spoilers so there's your warning but I loved this movie as a kid and watching it as an adult my appreciation and love for it only grows. Like, I, I am very nostalgia for this movie. The thing that I remember this movie most for is it was one of the first kind of spooky movies my parents let me watch when I was really young. But they always told me to cover my eyes during a few moments. So like when the arc is melting everyone's faces, it, I pretended to close my eyes, but I always peeked and I loved it. And I still love it to this day. But let's get to talking about the story. And I just love how this movie is a pure adventure flick. I wish we got more movies like this. It just captures that vibe so perfectly. And it's just escapist fun while having a great story, having great direction, and having great characters. And what better way to begin this classic with one of the all-time opening scenes, all time best opening scenes, but yeah, like this movie just starts off on a really strong note. Like when we're watching them get to the golden idol and all the obstacles they have to overcome and then everything goes wrong and he has to go back through all those obstacles but with small urgency. It just makes for a thrilling set piece and that border chase is just iconic. And then we get the scene afterwards where they go ahead and tell you everything that's going to happen in this movie. Where they need to go, what they need to look for, it's all here in this one scene. And it doesn't just feel like blatant exposition, it does feel natural and authentic to the story being told. And then just every scene in this movie is just great. I mean, he goes to Nepal and you've got a great scene there. He goes to Cairo and you get this great chase scene. He goes to the map room. That's a great moment. There's everything with the well of souls. That's great. The plane fight. Love it. You got the truck chase. Amazing, you've got everything with the submarine and the boat, fantastic. Then you've got the finale, fantastic, and it's all done in under two hours. Like, it just flies by. It is a perfectly paced movie. And it's just filled with so many memorable moments. And I, I also love the one scene where we know the dates. Yeah. I think the dates are poisoned, but Indiana doesn't. So when he throws that date in the air, there's some real tension there. I love that. And you've just got yourself some amazing characters. Indiana Jones himself is just played so perfectly by Harrison Ford. He is the perfect leading man. He's got a personality, but he's just so... What's the word? He fills all the tropes they needed to while still being his own thing entirely. And he just kind of gives off those vibes of like the classic Errol Flynn and all that. He captures that kind of vibe, which I really love. And Harrison Ford, just nobody could do it like he did. Nobody. There's talks about... Oh, Chris Pratt might replace him, or Shia LaBeouf might, or Phoebe Waller-Bridger might, and just no one can do it to this level. He was born for this character. And just something as small as the fact he hates snakes, but he puts himself in these situations, just, I, I, I love that. Then you've got Karen Allen, who's super cute, and she's tough. And she's just a great pleasant presence to have in this movie. And I do like their relationship for the most part. It's very well developed and there is a nice sweetness. I'll, I'll address one thing later on. But for most of what's in the movie, it's a great highlight. Then you've got John Weiss Davies as Salah. And... 
For someone who's just in this movie a bit, he's got such a memorable personality. Like, when Marion gives him a kiss and he just stops and then starts singing and he's just overwhelmed with joy. It's just a nice character moment. Then you've got Paul Freeman as Bellic, who's just the perfect counterbalance to Indiana Jones, because this guy just always gets lucky. Indiana Jones does all the work, goes through all the dirt and the grime and all that, but Bellic is the one who always takes the reward away from him, and you just understand Indiana's hatred of him. Then you've got Denham Elliott, Marcus Brody, who I think is good in the short time he's in this movie. You've got Ronald Lacey, who plays the hand dude, you know, when he picks up the thing and he screams and runs out, and yeah, uh, he's really good in this movie, memorable for a character who's not in it a bunch. And then you've got Alfred Milena early on, who is good. So the entire cast does a great job, but in Harrison Ford here is just on another level. Like, I don't, yeah, he didn't win an Oscar for this movie. That's why I don't take them seriously. Because how could you watch this movie and not think this is just, like, a top-notch performance? He makes it come across so easy. And I, I, yeah, moving on to the next point. This movie is also brilliantly directed by Steven Spielberg. It's just made with confidence. But John Williams also should have some of that spotlight because his music is incredible and it elevates every scene. And you put these two together like plenty of times and they just like they go together so well and you know, like, there's one moment early on where they're talking about the Ark of the Covenant, and then the music just starts playing the... Doo, doo, doo. Okay, I can't do it, but it's just... It's just such a perfectly made scene, and... I also love just how dirty and sandy this movie is. It really feels like they're digging stuff up, that they're going to these places underground, just... It has that kind of texture to it, it f gets me more immersed in the adventure. I also love the creepiness of this movie. Like I said, as a kid, I was told to cover my eyes, I always peeked, but man, like whether it's Alfred Milena getting stabbed by those spikes early on, or whether it's, um, um, what's a, oh, when the wall comes down and the well of souls and there's all those screaming skeletons, I love that. And even the snakes are really gross and slimy and add some nice tension. Or whether it's everyone's facing melt, face, everyone's face melt. That's a great moment and the practical effects are just wonderful. The visual effects, do they look great? No. Do they hold up well enough? Yes. Um, and, okay, so they don't quote me here. Should have looked it up actually prior to this, but I think this was the movie to do the map traveling where they go from one destination to the next and you're watching the lines on a map. I'm pretty sure this is the first. If not, I still love what they do with that. And if it is the first, it's just iconic and yeah, still great. Uh, the truck chasing, I love how just exciting that sequence is. It is perfectly directed and the stunts and everything is just top notch. And you can just feel the love and passion in every frame of this movie. And one thing watching it now that I kind of forgot is just how funny it is. Like when Indiana is getting chased early on and there's a guy with the plane just fishing and Indiana's just like, start the plane! And he's just thinking to himself, ah, fishing, or start the plane. And then he starts the plane, that's great. Or the girl writing, I love you on her eyelids, that's a great moment. Um, the one line by Sala, there's not one clever mind among them. Well, except for one. <laughs> that might be one of my favorite lines ever. Uh, how the children save Indiana in that one scene is great. Oh, Salah telling Indiana, oh, this is very dangerous. You go first. Or when the hand dude sees Marion talking to Bellic and he takes out what looks like a nunchuck kind of thing. 
and then he just turns into a hangle and hangs up his coat. It's just so great, but um, I've heard some criticisms among this movie, so let's address them. Uh, the first one is, though, I think it was a Big Bang Theory episode that got this criticism popular, and it's the fact that Indiana Jones doesn't actually affect anything in the movie at all, and I don't agree, because they followed him to Marion, and then they also misused the thing in the map room, and he had to find the wealth source. And then on top of that, let's say, you know, let's take that essential facts out of it. It's still a damn entertaining movie that's perfectly made, great character. So, like, I, I don't know, it doesn't really... If it was true, I'd be like, okay, it's still a great entertaining movie that takes you on the wide. But that's not even the case because it's still not true. So, anyways, there's that complaint. And there's a complaint about when... Indiana and Marion are talking, and she, he, she's just like, I was a child. And he's like, you know what you were doing. And that didn't bother me for the longest time, because I always just assumed that, like, since he's a university professor, that Marion saying that she was a child was, like, 19 or early 20s. But looking into it online, it seems like the relationship actually was inappropriate. So, yeah, it's wrong, it's gross, they don't lean into that too much. It's easy to look back on movies made from this time ago and just be like, oh yeah, this movie's so unethical and it's so gross when you are looking at it through a different lens. And I try not to get caught up on that all too often. I'm more harsher on modern movies on that basis than older ones. But... It's a factor I wish wasn't in this movie. It is slightly creepy. It, it's not slightly creepy. It is creepy, but it doesn't affect my enjoyment of this movie overall. But I still acknowledge it's wrong. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Love this movie. Great adventure movie. Great characters. Harrison Ford's fantastic. Perfectly directed by Steven Spielberg. Great music. That map room scene is just fantastic. So, so many great moments. It flies by. Love it. Raiders of the Lost Ark get a 9 out of 10. Okay, what did you think about Raiders of the Lost Ark? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.